Hello and welcome to Field Mode. So far in our series on earthquakes, we've learned about wave types and how we can see those waves through the use of a seismograph and kind of where those all started. But being scientists means quantifying those waves into terms so we can compare them. And we do this through the use of scales. Now many of us will have heard at least about one of these, but it might surprise you to know that's not the one we use anymore. So today we'll be talking about the three most common scales, starting with the modified Mercalli scale. This was developed by Giuseppe Mercalli in the early 20th century. He was an Italian seismologist and didn't have access to the equipment that we heard about last time. This led to his studies being based on observations and personal accounts of the damage done. So the scale that he developed was based on level of damage. This scale as we know it today was tweaked and modified until 1931, credited to Harry Wood and Frank Newman. This scale ranges from a 1 to 10 in intensity, 1 being not many people feel it, and 10 being complete destruction. The modified Mercalli scale hinges on a few key responses. People being woken up, furniture being moved, and then masonry being destroyed. This scale is not really used anymore, mostly because building codes are vastly different depending on where you live. This leads to variable damage in otherwise similar structures and therefore an inaccurate way to compare earthquakes throughout the world. However, this flaw is one of the reasons why I think it is still useful. In the United States, a moderately sized earthquake could be damaging but not crippling. However, in other parts of the world, it could mean complete destruction. The modified Mercalli scale adds an appreciable human element to how big an earthquake was to its victims. The next scale we're going to talk about was developed shortly after the modified Mercalli scale in 1934. This is the scale that everybody knows about. It's the Richter scale, developed by Charles Richter. This scale uses a formula based on the amplitude of the largest wave during an earthquake. Richter developed this scale for use on a specific seismometer, a specific distance from the earthquake, in California. Other scales were developed in other situations to be consistent with Richter's. The Richter scale is logarithmic, meaning a magnitude 4 earthquake is 10 times bigger than a magnitude 3. Each whole number increase corresponds with about 31 times more energy being released. The Richter scale isn't really used in the science community anymore. Its downfall, besides its specificity with how it can be used, is its inability to accurately measure large earthquakes. The Richter scale is okay for measuring small and medium sized earthquakes, but it can't measure anything above a magnitude for this reason, the Richter scale is really only used by the media as a reference. The newest scale to enter the scene is the Moment Magnitude, introduced by Tom Hank and Hiro Kanamori in 1979. Unlike the scales before it, the Moment Magnitude measures the size of a seismic event in terms of energy, specifically the amount of movement by rock. Because rock is a fairly consistent measuring tool, it can be used worldwide. This scale is also logarithmic, so like Richter's, a magnitude Four earthquake will be 10 times bigger than a magnitude 3. To reach the magnitude of an earthquake using this scale, you will measure the seismic moment, which is equal to the rigidity of the earth, multiplied by the average amount of slip on the fault and the size of the area that slipped. And you will then plug it into this equation. The moment magnitude is the most widely used scale by geologists today because of its consistency on a global setting. It can also measure large earthquakes much more accurately than Richter scale. So while historically we still use the Richter scale, we use the moment magnitude to study modern earthquakes. We're slowly getting all we need to know about earthquakes. If you've missed another video in the playlist, I will link it here. Next time we'll be talking about the effects of earthquakes with some examples for good measure. Be sure if you have specific questions to leave them down below. Remember to like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you would like to see more, and I will see you next time. This was, de this was developed by Jess Jessup? Giuseppe? This was developed by Giuseppe Mercabatipa. That's gonna be fun. This was developed by Jessup. Jessup. I'm gonna call him Jessup. Giuseppe. Why is that so hard for me to say? <laughs> I don't either. This th this was developed by Jess. This was <laughs> shut up. This was developed by Giuseppe Mercalli in the earliest twentieth century. Earliest? Early. I said earliest. Yes. He was an Italian seismologist and didn't have the. A oh God! I feel like you <laughs> you tune me out until I say yeah. Is that okay? Does that make sense? It's fine. Okay. This scale is not used very much anymore because of what? How you like talk about something or you say something yeah. long enough, you're like, is that what it's called? Is it a scale? What are you?